Hi, I'm Josh Harris with Queen and Colony Bee Company, and I'd like to welcome you back to our series, Making Money Beekeeping. This is the third and final part of this series, and I'm going to cover marketing your bee business. Now, the first thing I want to share is um, what we have experienced, the things that we've learned from going from a hobby to a hobby income to a sideline business, and then to a full-time business, some of the things that have worked for us. And the first thing I would say is to start small have small beginnings. Learn to be successful with a little bit before you try to be successful with a lot. And with our start, we began to um, harvest more honey than we could eat. And so we started giving some honey away to neighbors and friends and family. And that was really the start of our business because through that, um, the word got out that we had good honey. We had local honey and it turned out there was a lot of people in our area that wanted local honey. And so we began to get requests and began to get calls just from word of mouth. And so that was a, a, the way that we started. And I think it's a great way to start is to be generous as you're keeping bees in your backyard or wherever you're keeping them to start sharing with those around you and let the word get out. Um, so start small and then um, scaling up. One of the things that we did is we really made an effort to get involved in our local community. And um, through doing that, we began to know our market. We live in an area that's really densely populated. We live in Pinellas County, Florida, which is one of the most um, densely populated areas in the country. And we are surrounded by um, Tampa on one side. We have Clearwater. We have Sarasota. We, we just have cities all around us. So we have a lot of people um, who are looking for local honey. And so get involved in your local community, get to know your market. For us, we started doing local markets, um, outside markets, things like farmers markets and other local markets that, that featured local vendors. And through that, we began to sell more honey. And then um, also we got involved in a local business alliance in St. Petersburg, Florida. And that was helpful in getting our name out to other local businesses. And also the Market Alliance puts on very large markets in our area. And um, through that, um, people began to recognize who we were and they began to recognize our honey. Um, at that time, we were selling um, through... Florida cottage food laws, a lot of state will have cottage food laws, which allows people to sell um, certain products without having um, a food permit. And so for us in Florida, honey is one of the products we were allowed to sell under Florida cottage food law. And that law has changed a little bit over time. Currently in Florida, a person can sell up to $50,000 of product in a year under the cottage food law. But there are some limitations with that. Under cottage food laws, um, you're not allowed to sell um, wholesale or resell. You have to sell your product directly to your customer. There can't be a middleman. Um, you are now allowed to sell online, but you have to deliver the product in person. And so there are some limitations in that, but for a while that worked really well for us operating under the cottage food law. And there's also some labeling requirements at least with the state of Florida under Florida cottage food law. And um, then after you begin to get that sideline business going, what we did it was we just went for it. We decided to scale up and jumped into it full time because we saw it had been successful as a small hobby income. It had been successful as a sideline business. So we were confident that we could scale it up and continue to be successful and to be profitable with our business. And so when we decided to go full time, the first thing we did was we rebranded our company. At that time we were called Harris Honey. It was um, a sole proprietorship and um, our labels and our branding <laughs> were things that I had made on Photoshop with the limited skill I have. And it wasn't impressive at all. And so we decided that we wanted to have a more professional look, a better look. And I actually, got advice from a friend of mine who was um, who owned a successful canning company locally. And one of the things she told me that um, had helped her was to really set apart her product from the competition. And um, our products were similar, canning and honey. They're, they're pretty similar, different. She was making jellies and jams. And um, one of the things that she noticed was a lot of the marketing or a lot of the branding and labels just looked like a grandma had made them on um, like 
paint app or something. And so um, she had hired a really good local designer to brand her company and to make the labels. And I actually ended up hiring the same designer and it cost a lot of money up front. Um, for us, I believe it cost $6,700 for the branding and the design of our initial labels, but it was an investment that was worth it a hundred times over. And so, um, one of the things we tried to do is, was really set ourselves apart, have a look that's different that will, when you see our product on the shelf, it will kind of draw your eyes to it. People shop with their eyes before they shop with their taste. And so we wanted to make sure we had a product that looked good. And so um, this is the, the honey jar. This is our best seller, our Tampa Bay honey. And um, it's a label that features our city around it, the Tampa Bay area. We have the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. And um, working with this design company, we have been very, very pleased with that. And then we have some other products. This is a chunk honey that has a honeycomb in it. And then also we um, have a cut comb honey product. Try to get it focused there. But, um, but our branding and our label design has been a, a huge help for us in um, making our product recognizable and, um, and it sells better when it looks good. And so that has been important for us. Another thing I would um, recommend if you're going to scale up and start selling um, wholesale or retail is get a food permit. Um, for us that required us in Florida, we have to rent a commercial kitchen, we have to come in, have it inspected. Um, there's labeling requirements for that. There's a lot that goes into it. There's um, costs involved between the kitchen rental and the permit fees um, annually. But, um, but that's what's required to sell honey wholesale or retail um, or to do online sales that you ship. And so we have done it right. We are doing it according to the law. And I would suggest if you're going to do it, do it right. Um, don't be a jerk. There are others that um, sell honey wholesale retail without a food permit and um and it's really it's just not cool to the people around you who are doing it right because they're putting the effort in they're putting the money and time in to do it right and so i would i would suggest get a food permit do it right um be above board with that in your business and then um quality control when we first started um selling wholesale to stores to local stores I had one batch of honey that was high in moisture content. I didn't catch it. It ended up fermenting and that some honey was coming out from under the lids. And I got a call from the store manager and immediately I went and took that honey out and switched it out. And so that was a good lesson for me to always be on top of quality control. You don't want a product that's faulty, that's going to um, ruin your reputation in the area. And so um, that was a good lesson and a wake up call for me to have quality control. I always test the moisture of my honey before I bottle it and just taste your honey. Make sure you're giving a top product if you're gonna want a top price from that product. So quality control is important. You don't want a store ordering your honey once and then having customers say, this isn't very good and not ordering again. You want repeat customers and that's what's going to grow your business over the long term. And then um, target local independently owned businesses. That would be another advice I would give from our experience. Our very best customers are stores that are locally owned um, because the owners, they care about local, they care about quality, they care about the customers. One of the things, the trends that we've seen from more big box stores is that the managers um, and the, the people that would order your product a lot of times they don't have a personal investment in it. It's just a job for them. And, um, and they don't care as much about local and, and quality as someone who's has really so something more invested in their business and in the local community. So our best customers have been the local independently owned businesses. And so that's what we target as we try to get new stores on board. As we get more product, we want to grow our outlets and, um, for us, selling honey um, wholesale to stores has really been the way to go. 
we started selling, um, we did a lot of markets. I was doing at one time three markets a week and on top of the beekeeping and the business side and then on the weekends and, and other weeknights out at markets slinging honey, it just got to be too much. And so for us personally, um, selling wholesale to stores, we go and we deliver cases of honey and then they do the work of getting that honey out to the community and that's been the way to go for us. It's just a lot easier and it's still profitable for us and so um, next um, I want to talk about marketing how we've gotten our name out um, the best marketing for us has probably been content marketing with social media and um, our biggest platform right now is um, Instagram and that's something we've invested a lot of time and a lot of um, energy into having consistent posts on Instagram Instagram and trying to put um, content that is engaging and educational and interesting. And so we have um, right now a little over 9,000 Instagram followers. And, and that's our biggest um, platform on social media. We also do Facebook. And as you can see, we, we are um, just starting to try to grow our YouTube channel. But from that, people recognize you, especially in our community. People are like, hey, I know you guys. I follow you on Instagram. They rec begin to recognize your product. And then as they see your product in the stores, they connect a person, a face with it, and a, for us, a family with it. And it's helped our business grow. And then also, um, we have a website and we have online sales on our website. And so through the different platforms, people can have opportunities to um, go from whether it's Instagram or Facebook, go directly to our online store and order our products and have it shipped to them. And so that's been helpful. Um, our, our biggest revenue stream right now is from um, Wholesale Honey that we sell directly to stores. And then under that is, um, is online sales, which is a significant portion of our um, income and, and starting out it wasn't it was very small the online sales but over the years that has grown one thing that has helped us with that is um, growing an email list people that are interested in our business and want to um, get a newsletter and get updates and as we update them we give opportunities for different sales or different products that are available and so having um, an email list has helped with growing our online sales and so these are just a few things that have helped us in marketing our bee business. And I hope these things are helpful to you. Um, there's a lot more that could be said about this, but I want just to got, kind of give an overview of a few things that have helped our business grow. And I hope they can help you as well.